What is the color of summer? Is it a sparkling shade of blue, like the welcoming brisk waters of the ocean on a hot sunny day? Or is it a soft shade of pastel earth tones, like the sand on the beach? Is it a stunning shade of yellow? Orange? Red? Or perhaps a brilliant shade of green, of lush verdant forests and emerald lakes? Back in 2009, Data visualization experts and designers Fernanda Viegas and Martin Wattenberg went on to Flickr, which back then was the platform where people dumped their photos online, and collected photos of the Boston Common, which is a park in Boston, Massachusetts. Then, using an algorithm that they developed, they calculated the relative proportions of different colors seen in photos taken in each month of the year, and plotted them on a wheel. And the result was this. This visualization, which they called Flickr Flow, showed the ebb and flow of how colors in photos changed with the seasons. Fall was a good mix of fiery earth tones, winter, unsurprisingly, was mostly shades of grays and blues, spring had fresh greens and pops of reds and pinks, possibly from pictures of flowers, while summer, well, summer is mostly green and blues, though if we look back at the full picture, pops of warm colors do appear throughout the summer months here and there. But for sure, this is not representative of what summer is like all over the world. So, summer can be any color, really. But one thing I am sure of is that summer is a palette of saturated colors, brimming with life and youthful energy. And the challenge is how to properly capture this essence. Hello everyone, it's Bon and welcome back to my channel, and this is episode 2 of a series of videos that I'm doing about summer. Last episode, I talked about my general views on summer and its romanticization, as well as a trip that my friends and I took to Takaka Falls at Yoho National Park, and showcased the photos that I took. This video will continue that adventure, but I also want to talk a bit about capturing the essence of summer on a photograph, or any visual media for that matter like painting. For those of you who don't know, I actually paint as well. Admittedly, not so much at the moment, but it's definitely something that I would like to get back to at some point. Anyway, like I hinted at the beginning of this video, I personally think that to capture the essence of summer on a photograph or painting, you'll want to incorporate vibrant colors and play with lighting in your composition. Sure, some of you might say that this is overused and I should probably do something different, and that's okay. But I also think that it's okay to use popular visual iconography. I mean, making use of our shared visual language to convey a feeling or an idea isn't really a bad thing, right? Think about it. If I want another person to understand that my photo is about summer, then I should probably use elements that they would perceive as like summer. And I'm not saying that I'm an expert at this, but to me, a photo looks summery if it has the right combination of vibrant colors, emerald greens, natural sunlight, and possibly a warm glow. This is probably easier to do with painting because you have more freedom in mixing your own color palette, but for film photography, you'll have to think a bit about what film stock you should use. This is why during my trip to Yoho National Park, I decided to use a few rolls of Kodak Color Plus 200 and Kodak Actor 100. I already made a video about Kodak Color Plus, which I will link somewhere on your screen. It's a cheaper Kodak Color film stock similar to Kodak Gold and Ultramax. It renders warm colors, but I would say more neutral and less warm than that of Kodak Gold. On a sunny day, Color Plus renders outstanding color vibrance given its price range. Plus, I like how it looks a little vintage, kind of like how my childhood photos look like. Hence, I thought it'd be perfect for my candid or documentary photos during the summer road trip. Meanwhile, Kodak Actor 100 is a slow speed film that really loves the light. It's a mid-priced film, meaning it's not as expensive as the highly regarded Kodak Portra 400, 
but is still not as cheap as Kodak Color Plus. And it is highly regarded for its saturated, almost digital looking colors and fine grain. I think Kodak Ektor's characteristics make it the ideal film stock to capture summer photos with, especially those that involve colorful landscapes. Hence, I chose to load my Fujifilm TX1 with Kodak Ektor on our little summer road trip. Okay, let's get back to the trip. After stopping at Takaka Falls, we drove down to nearby Emerald Lake, which was the main destination of that road trip. We had to park further away from the parking lot because it was so full that day, but before heading straight to the lake, we found this short trail that takes you around the quiet wooded area to see the northern side of the lake. And we decided to go on the trail first, just to see what's out there. During this hike, we already got to see a preview of the emerald color of the lake. While I'm fairly used to this kind of water here where I live, it just doesn't grow old on you and is always fascinating to see. And the hike on the trail was pretty chill. It has the occasional high shrubs and bushes, and the one fallen tree. You just gotta be careful with the photography gear, I guess. <laughs> But yeah, um, we were pretty much at awe once we got a glimpse of the lake. It's so beautiful. Fun fact, Emerald Lake is the largest lake in Yoho National Park, and it's very popular for canoeing during the summer days. And obviously, it was called Emerald Lake because of its color, but that name was actually first given to Lake Louise in Banff National Park. Though personally, I think Emerald Lake's water looks more greenish than that of Lake Louise, which is more of a bluish shade of turquoise. But just like Lake Louise, this emerald color comes from the particles of fine glacial silt or rock flower suspended in its waters. Here are some of my favorite shots from this road trip. As you can see, Kota Color Plus really holds its own when it comes to vibrance, but Hector is just a tad more saturated. Kodak markets this film as a landscape color negative film that can rival digital or color positive film, or slide film. Slide films like Kodak Ektachrome and Fuji Velvia are some of the most colorful films I've ever had the experience of using, but they're kind of getting rare now and really expensive compared to negative film. And after a bit of walking around to explore the place, we went to this restaurant to have a very late lunch. <laughs> and it was great because they had an outdoor area where you get to enjoy the scenery while eating. After eating, I asked Bianca for a bit of a photo shoot using my Fujifilm TX1 and Kodak Actor. Because this film is really saturated and meant for a landscape, skin tones, especially light skinned with pink undertones, can look really red and unflattering with this film stock. So there seems to be some polarization happening online where some photographers hate it while some love it. I'm more on the love it side really. 
Like sure it's not an everyday type of film, but I actually think that olive skin tones and darker skin look great with this film stock. And of course, here's a group pick using the Contax TVS's timer feature. After that, we walk towards this area that we saw from the other side of the lake. This is just to the side of the canoe rental area, and it's the place where iconic photos of the lake are taken. We decided to camp here a bit and Guy and Bianca prepared some good coffee. Some of my shots with the Fujifilm TX1 are blurry though. <laughs> yeah. But overall, we really enjoyed our time at Emerald Lake. In the end, I think that taking some time to visualize the kinds of photos that you wish to take and preparing the right tools like choosing your film stock and your camera setup is a good habit to have. This can allow you to really take the photos that you wish to take and achieve your creative goals. However, there's also something romantic about being spontaneous and just going with the flow every now and then. I really had fun challenging myself to take photos that quintessentially depict summer and I'm quite happy with my results. But I would also like to say that it's kind of easy to take beautiful photos when you go to beautiful places, and capturing those vibrant summer colors isn't much of a challenge when your subject's already vibrant and colorful to begin with. So the question really isn't, what is the color of summer? But rather, what makes summer so vibrant? This makes a challenge not just about capturing the right colors, but also about people, emotions, and experiences. Because what truly makes our lives vibrant and colorful isn't just the season, the place, or the colors already present around us, but rather the people we surround ourselves with and the memories we make and share with each other. And that's it! Thank you very much for watching this video, I hope you liked it. If you did, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. I really enjoy making videos like this where I get to be a bit more philosophical about things, but they take more effort to make and I, they don't really get as much views as say my videos about reusable film cameras. So if you like this, I would really appreciate it if you can drop a comment, leave a like, and share it to your friends or something. <laughs> Anyways, I'm Bon, and I hope to see you all again in the next video. Cheers!